Doctors are calling on authorities to be more proactive in protecting people against health issues and disease during heat waves. The Royal Australian College of Physicians has launched a briefing paper today pushing for investment in an early warning system to prepare against climate sensitive infectious diseases. For more, Dr Tony Campon is our RACP Fellow and the inaugural Professor of Planetary Health at the University of Sydney and he joins me now. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, terrific to be with you, Kirsten. Now this report comes as part of a series that The Lancet is doing on health and climate change and this is the first one with a specific Australian focus. Can you that's take right. me through its main findings? Yes, that's right. The, the Lancet, which is the leading medical journal in the world, has a countdown on health and climate change each year. And for the first time today, uh, we've been working with the Medical Journal of Australia here to develop a downscaled version for our country. Uh, we call it the MJA Lancet uh, Countdown on Health and Climate Change. OK, so what is it telling us? It's telling us that we need to be concerned that the lack of policy action on climate change in Australia is threatening lives. And it's doing so in a variety of ways. Uh, you mentioned heat waves. Uh, heat waves are the deadliest natural hazard in Australia and climate change is amplifying the frequency, intensity and duration of heat waves. So we're seeing them more, they're hotter, they're longer. And uh, we need to get much more serious about protecting health in this changing climate. And so in terms of heat waves, is there any one group or number of groups who are more susceptible? Yes, on the whole, older people, younger people, people who have other chronic illnesses are more vulnerable. Now, clearly, in a heat wave, one thing people can do is uh, go to an air-conditioned place, and that's one option. But uh, to air-condition, we have to use a lot of energy, and that means burning more coal, which only releases more greenhouse gas emissions. So we need to be thinking about other ways of protecting people from heat waves. And that includes growing more trees in cities to cool down the cities naturally, or indeed using fans in our houses instead of air conditioners. And it's a lot less energy. Only 2% of the energy uh, to run a fan per hour as to run an air conditioner. I understand the report was also looking at the way that warming temperatures impact the distribution and number of mosquitoes in Australia. Indeed. So changing weather conditions under a changing climate will affect where mosquitoes can breed. So we get changes in the distribution of mosquitoes around the country, changes in the abundance of those mosquitoes. Have we already seen that with diseases like dengue and Ross River fever, that people are now contracting them in areas that they didn't used to? That's right. So traditionally these were diseases of far north Queensland and the tropical zone, but we're starting to see these diseases emerging uh, further south in the country. And so we need uh, to implement these early warning systems uh, in other parts of the country. Now the report is interesting also because it includes an indicator on mental health. And so in terms of heat waves, who would be most susceptible there? Yes, so uh, it's the first time that a report like this has had an indicator on mental health. Most of the research on climate change and health focuses on the physical health effects of climate change. And uh, now at the University of Sydney, we've got a new program focusing on mental health and climate change. One example of those effects is if we think about the deep drought here on the east side of Australia at the moment, that's drying out soil in rural areas. Uh, it's leading to declines in agricultural productivity, declines in incomes for farmers, and that affects their mental well-being and the, and the viability of rural communities. So we're concerned about rates of depression and anxiety among farmers, uh, rates of suicide in this country, but also in other parts of the world, in India and elsewhere. And so you mentioned this is a part of a briefing paper. It does contain a number of recommendations. So it will be going to federal government from here? Look, absolutely, we need policy action. We've had a decade of policy stasis in this country. Both sides of the big parties, Labor and Liberal, have been bad on climate change. We need action now. Professor Tony Kappen, thank you so much for explaining the report to us. Thank you.